everybody gets depressed. The person on your right, the person on your left, you, me, we all sometimes experience down moods. Sometimes it's a little bit of feeling in a dark hole. Sometimes it's a heavy dark cloud. But these are all different levels of intensity of the blues of depression. Let's learn what you can do when you feel depressed. Prescription number one is a do not. Do not go to a physician to get pills, antidepressant medication. Too many downsides. Risks of weight gain, lowered libido, fuzziness, inability to feel joy, and drug dependency. That is when you try to get off it because your body is used to having that fix, you're likely to crash. Not because you had an underlying depression, but because of a withdrawal reaction. Too many costs and unnecessary to take pills. Prescription number two, recognize when you are depressed. There's power in a word and saying, oh, I feel dark, I feel heavy, hmm, low energy, that's depression. In addition, look for the, what Dr. Aaron Beck, Beck called the negative cognitive triad. Negative thoughts about yourself, self-criticism. Negative thoughts about others, annoyed, oh, he's so, she's so. And negative thoughts in the form of hopelessness about your future. That won't work. I won't be able to. Those are all signs of depression. Once you've recognized, oh, that's what Dr. Heitler talked about. That's depression. Let that light bulb go off. And then you're ready for prescription number three, which is to use your hand map. Now your hand tends to be a handy handout, if you'll excuse the puns, because it tells you that as you go down the road of life, from time to time you're going to hit a bump. This realm of well-being often still leads you into bumpsville. A bump is a conflict, a problem, a dilemma, an issue, something that's gone wrong that's bugged you. Oh, what are your options at that moment? So what your hand tells you is you can proceed down one of five finger routes. They're all F words, finger routes. The best route is to take the thumb road. Thumbs up is the problem solving route and it leads you back into the realm of well-being. The first finger, that's this one. Get mad, blame, criticize, attack. Mm -mm. Not a very good road to take, yet many people take it, and you probably sometimes do as well. Option number two, fold road. Giving up leads to depression, so we'll come back to that one. Road number three, freeze like a deer in headlights. Immobilization prevents you from doing something that would get you hurt. It blocks you, though, from solving the problem. So when something ahead looks problematic and scares you, if you freeze, you won't be solving the problem and you'll perpetuate that anxiety. Fourth option, flee. Stop off at the local bar and take a flight into some form of addiction. Okay, so if folding on some important problem is what triggered depression, well, why not unfold? Just go back and fix it. Sounds easy. It's a little complicated. First of all, when you've got one of those heavy clouds of depression over you, often you don't know what triggered it. Second, even if you did know, the reason you folded is you didn't feel powerful enough to solve the problem in the first place. Ah, on to prescription number four a visualization that overcomes those two difficulties. It's a visualization exercise that I call the three P's. The three P's are pinpoint the problem, pump up your internal sense of empowerment, and then problem solve. Here's how it works. I'll give you an example with Yolanda. You'll, as a psychologist, I often have people come into my office with depression. What was interesting about Yolanda is she looked lovely. She was so likable. 
Until she started explaining her difficulty, she looked on top of everything, lovely marriage, great kids. Then she started talking and she said, for months, I'm always on the verge of tears. I even have thoughts of suicide. I try to talk about it with my husband and he gets mad because it's the same thing over and over again. Light bulb, serious depression. Okay, Yolanda, let's get right to work. Have you taken any, done anything for it already? She says, I've been for three or four months on an antidepressant and it's done nothing except taken away my sexual feelings. Maybe that's why my husband is so annoyed with me and I feel bad about that loss also. Okay, let's move forward. Close your eyes, Yolanda. Allow an image to come up of someone or something that you could be angry at. Not yourself, someone out there. Yolanda said, I see the boardroom where I work. I work for a very large construction company. And every so often we have meetings, actually quite frequently, of all the project supervisors of which I'm one. The rest are all men. So what's going on in that meeting that bothers you? They ignore what I say. They tell me I'm wrong. No, that's not right. Or they just interrupt me and go on as if I didn't have a voice at all. Ah, in that scene, Yolanda, who looks bigger, you or them? That question is the test for whether we've identified the bump. Yolanda said, I feel very small, like a little girl. And they look huge, like big football players, which Probably a lot of them were. Excellent, Yolanda. That's the test that says we've pinpointed the problem. Let's go on to pumping up. Take a deep breath. And with each deep breath, feel yourself growing bigger and bigger till you're significantly bigger than the others in that room. Yolanda smiled and said, hmm. My head is about to bump into the ceiling. Can I stop growing? I said, mm, good idea. Once she looked really bigger, we're ready for step three, problem solve. Problem solving begins with gathering information. Yolanda, what can you see from that larger empowered position that you couldn't see when you were feeling very small? Yolanda said, you know, they don't look scary to me anymore. They look frightened. I think they're intimidated by the fact that I really know more than they do. I studied with advanced degrees, both in business and in construction management. They know a lot, but they haven't got the academic credentials I do. And also, my boss really respects me. And I think um, they're threatened that I'm going to get promoted above them. Ah. With that new knowledge, what new solution can you see? Yolanda said, oh, I see something else, too. I see that the little version of me was talking in this little voice, or wouldn't speak up at all. Or when I spoke up, it was in an, it, with an inner feeling that they're not going to listen to me. Ah, what's the solution that's coming to mind now for that problem? I'm done with being that intimidated little girl. From now on, when I go into those meetings, I'm going to speak up with confidence, extra loud. If they don't listen to me, or if they interrupt me, <coughs> excuse me, I want to put this thought out. I think it's very important. If they say no to me, I will very nicely and strongly say, yes, I agree that could be a problem, and I want to bring back what I said before, because it's very important. I can stand up for myself. I asked Yolanda, how are you feeling right now? Yolanda smiled. I'm not in the hole anymore. I have no heavy, dark burden over me. I feel great. You can feel great, too. Life is not an endurance contest. If you feel down, lift yourself up with these four prescriptions. Thank you.